When I say formula, I don't want to get <laughs> too poetic, but I like to think of it as a Y equals MX plus B. Okay. Kind of, you know, like you have that set structure and okay. you put in the X and the Y variable. Welcome back, my dear virtual little siblings and parents <laughs> who are watching this wonderful interview with Fajuni from Quad Education. Fajuni has a range of experience. As Kevin shared, my name is Fajuni. I have been working in college access, I want to say since 2015, a bit unofficially and like more professionally since 2016. As a first gen um, student immigrant, um, I did not know much about the college process mm. and I looked for intervention programs and local community organizations. Through the support of a community-based organization, I was able to spend like a summer at a local college learning about the college application process and better preparing myself. Within this time frame, I've seen a lot of different shifts. I think that is one thing that I've seen that there are so many different providers for college access. The completely free to very hefty price range kind of offerings, but that this is becoming more and more a refined process, right? Like mm. it's almost like when you think about the SAT or the ACT, right? They teach you that there are tests that you can learn, that there is a formula, that there's practice tests, right? Like through repetition and doing, you get familiar with questions and things. Well, there's a formula to college admissions now, right? We are given playbooks and we're able to learn and follow like, okay, this is the timeline. This is what you should be doing as a freshman. This is what you should be doing as a sophomore. This is what you should be doing as a junior or a senior to reach success. But all of that builds upon each other. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. I feel like when I started out, it was so mystic, right? This process. And I feel like people like you, people like me, were demystifying it for so many different people that there is, you know, a set yeah. kind of formula that you can follow for sure um, and not to say that this will be the same for everyone right but there are recommendations based on goals you have and the schools you're looking at so i think that is a key development Definitely. that we've seen in the past decade for sure for sure so i wanted to touch upon a few things that fajuni has already mentioned the first is just taking advantage of the low-hanging fruit free resources like mm -hmm. right off the bat guys Look into those pre-college programs, whether you're low income, middle class, regardless of your background, it can only pretty much help you to apply for those pre-college programs. Even just applying and getting in, you don't necessarily even have to go. But for instance, my alma mater, Yale, offers the YYGS, Yale Young Global Scholars Program. There's fly-in programs for students who are low income. They literally will pay for your flight to come visit the school. That's something that a lot of students don't know about. Many students have just watched YouTube videos and told us that that's what helped them get in. And also Quad is offering free intro calls. So you guys should definitely take advantage of that. Speak to a counselor, find out what your strategy or formula might be. That's a really simple way just to get started. So I wanted to dig a little bit deeper into this formula that you're mentioning. Like you said, it's one of those things where there is a bit of a recipe, but at the same time, like people can add their individual touches. Is there a formula for every kind of student, for a specific kind of student? What do you exactly mean by this formula? When I say formula, I don't want to get too poetic, but I like to think of it as a Y equals MX plus B. Okay. Kind of, you know, like you have that set structure and okay. you put in the X and the Y variable. There are recommendations for students who want to pursue specific tech careers, mm. right? So you can be very pragmatic in your search yes. on Google. Look for um, recommendations for students who want to pursue engineering or pathways for students interested in cybersecurity. I always recommend that to my clients with Quad, like we do a little aptitude test together. Mm. It's not extensive, but for students who are like ninth graders and they're like, I don't know what I want to do. I kind of like my trial. I kind of like this. I've been in that. Um, in eighth grade, I like this. Like it's an opportunity to really sit down with yourself and get some suggestions. But there are other resources like articles and blogs that talk about those specific fields, right? Like you want to get information about the things that you're interested in so that you can plan as much as possible. Because organization then allows you to make calculated decisions. This process is formulaic in that there are milestones, right? Mm -hmm, There's a mm -hmm. certain point. You, you're not writing a personal statement the spring of your senior year because application deadlines have already passed, right? So there are set timelines that will 
ultimately determine when you're doing these things. So if you're a person who says that you are dedicated to civic service, but you just started volunteering in senior year, are you dedicated to civic <laughs> service, right? Like, or are you a person who heard that that's something good to put on an application, right? Yes. So you want to think about how you're <laughs> dedicating your time and what that says about you as a person, right? Because you know on the Common App, you're submitting your activities, right? right? right you're right. writing in your personal statement about the things that you've done. The summer pre-college program at Stevens that just taught you you love biochemistry, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Like, you want to be able to show some type of evidence. I like to say to my students that you are the person that you want to portray. I'm a great scholar. I'm yeah. a person who is so active in my school community. I am a person who wants to change the world through health sciences or through political science, right? Like, mm -hmm. how mm -hmm. do you show that if you don't have a record of that? Like, we know this when it comes to jobs. Your resume should show that you've done a project or two in coding if you want to get a coding position, right? At the end of the day, it's about your ability to succeed in that program. And I think that's something that isn't really focused on. It's a business, ultimately, right? You're paying these people to train you, but they're also accepting you. Just simple red flag, guys. If you're interested in cybersecurity and you don't have anything at all on your profile that kind of shows that, the only experience you have is something very, very recent, that is going to be a little bit of a tough pill for the admissions officer to swallow. Granted, we understand this happened to me too. I wasn't even really sure what I wanted to study in college and I was kind of just left looking at my extracurriculars and sort of figuring out what can I cook and make with these ingredients. Mm -hmm. And so you might find yourself in that position if you are a junior or senior, but if you are a ninth grader, 10th grader, you have a bit more time. Mm -hmm. Start thinking about that timeline, guys, because you apply senior fall. In the three or six months before senior fall, you shouldn't just be trying to pack and build your profile then. What colleges wanna see is they wanna see, again, evidence, proof that you've been doing this for years. That's super convincing. When we talk about a formula, it's not that complicated. You're pursuing contests outside of school. Perhaps you're looking at some internships, some work experience, uh, you're doing clubs, your academic interests in school, you took AP Computer Science, making sure you have that one, two, three, four, five ingredients to kind of showcase that this is something that you've been taking seriously for at least, you know, one or two years. That is going to give you a humongous boost when it comes to applying to college. Now, that being said, you don't have to have everything figured out in 10th grade. Ninth and 10th grade can just be used to figure out what do I like and what don't I like? Just figuring out if you're gonna be a STEM or humanities kid, that's a good goal to have in ninth or 10th grade. Now, that being said, some kids figure out that they like a little bit of both. One of our students was really interested in public health, but also he loved debate. So he wrote his essay about the marriage between these two subjects and how there was a huge debate, right? About COVID, vaccinations. His entire common app about was about this misinformation and how to convince people when it comes to science. Again, there's many different ways to succeed, but approaching this, guys, from a bit more of a strategic, formulaic point of view, mm -hmm. that's only going to help you. Right. Like when you first start cooking and someone tells you to bake a cake, wouldn't it be helpful to know a recipe? Yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> that's all we're trying to say here. Kevin, I love how you put it into those specific categories, right? Like we're thinking about extracurriculars. We're thinking about recommendations. When it comes to letters of recommendations, I actually tell my students, you should be preparing for this since your ninth grade year. Typically, they want to see teachers that have taught you for more than one year. Mm -hmm. But if that is your only option, right, work those relationships. Use your interpersonal skills. Pivot yourself into a, a place where both your teachers, your guidance counselor, heck, even the principal at your school, they could write you a stellar recommendation. And I love what Kevin says, ninth and 10th grade is a time for exploration. Because a lot of students, they don't know what they want to do. So being intentional about your exploration doesn't mean that mm. you're not trying different clubs, right? Because at the end of the day, we can always spin that differently. Yeah. Right. You have control over that narrative. But if you don't have those early experiences that said, OK, I tried this. It just didn't work out. There's no story to tell. Right. Like, yeah. it's just, oh, yeah, I wanted to try that club, but I just never did it. <laughs> so like freshman year, you did nothing. Right. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. One thing that really stuck out to me about what you just said, which I'd like to build off of, is this intention behind the exploration. You yourself can start taking initiative behind your own exploration just by looking at additional resources. YouTube, there's like brilliant 
channels and documentaries about historical subjects, or you can start a little history club at your school. There's just so many ways to showcase that, that honestly, it's a little bit of a red flag if you know you were just sort of twiddling your thumbs and didn't really do much during ninth or 10th grade. Fajuni also mentioned a passion project or independent project. This is actually like a cheat code to get a great recommendation letter. You can start a little club, a little initiative. I'll just give um, a random example that maybe one of our students has done. Just They're exploring history from both an American and Japanese point of view, and they were investigating uh, World War II, Pearl Harbor, the bombings. And so these two nations, they talk about this history in completely different ways. All you guys have to do is ask your history teacher to be an advisor, an informal advisor. Show them your notes, show them what you're working on every month, and that's it. We're just talking like a 20 minute meeting, staying after class, or maybe chatting with them during lunch about this project that you're working on that you're genuinely passionate about. It doesn't have to be you showing up, you know, every Friday with like muffins and trying to butter them up, but just involving them, asking them for help, asking them intelligent questions is actually a simple but really powerful way to get these recommenders to write amazing letters for you. This formula that we're talking about, right? One of the most important elements is just simple timing. The students who start working on their essays in October, you don't need to start writing your essay your sophomore year, nothing like that. Yeah. But we're just talking, giving yourself a little bit more breathing room, three or four months, even baking in weeks in your schedule where you know, I'm gonna be really busy, I'm gonna be away at a summer program, giving yourself a little bit of a grace period, simple things like that will make a monumental difference over the long run. So coming back to this idea of a formula or a strategy, Fajuni, like what's the difference between a good one, a bad one, and like a really good one and a really bad one? Does that mm. kind of make sense? Yes. The biggest difference between a good one and a bad one is how realistic is it to you as a person? I know I struggle with procrastination. As you say, right, Kevin, plan a long runway. Right now, I'm applying to law school in the fall, but mm -hmm. I've already written my personal statement, right? Like, so <laughs> this is a skill that you do build in undergrad, but it carries you for the rest of your life. What I'm hearing is whether the strategy is good or bad or not, it's actually really subjective. Again, it depends on intention and most importantly, self-awareness, guys. Mm -hmm. Like if you know you're the student who is just on fire, you can crack academic tests, then you're gonna, you can go for a much more brainiac route, like compete in science bowl, do the biology Olympiad, do the chemistry Olympiad. But if you know that's just not happening for you, you're much more of a people person. Focus on investing into nonprofits, interacting with other people, interpersonal relationships with your recommenders. This again is information that you kind of want to start figuring out as a ninth or 10th grader. Again, it doesn't have to be like, okay, I'm going to sit down June of freshman year. I'm going to figure out if I'm a people person or it doesn't have to be like that. You know, it's going to happen way more naturally. But as you continue to develop your interests, you should also be developing your self-awareness and just understanding what is it that comes more naturally or easier to me. So start to evaluate what some of those strengths and weaknesses are. And again, invest more in the strengths and also have fun with it. This shouldn't be a process where you're just pulling teeth and you feel miserable all the time. There's definitely ways to nurture your strengths using, again, some of these like passion projects and things like that. We ourselves have a playlist dedicated to helping students develop passion projects. Some students have created YouTube channels about crazy geography facts. Mm -hmm. Some students have created nonprofits where they, you know, perform music at hospitals or retirement homes. When it comes to this formula, intentionality, timing, self-awareness, passion. Those are kind of like the subjective, right? Kind of criteria. On the more objective, hardcore side, I guess you have like making sure you have your extracurriculars right, recommendations, internships, clubs. You kind of want to combine both if possible. I know that's a lot of information. It's much easier you know, said than done. But those are the kinds of things that I wish someone had told me when I was in ninth and 10th grade. Because like I said, I was left scrambling, looking at my random extracurriculars and figuring out like, what can I, what can I do with this? Yes. Heavy, heavy, heavy on the self-awareness and combining, right? Some of your interest points. I had one of my clients, she was very into sustainability and fashion and business. And one thing that she did was clean state parks. Um, but she also created a sustainability club at her school where they repurpose clothing. She ultimately applied to NYU's fashion business program and she was accepted. But like knowing what that end goal was, she created um, a candidate profile that really reflected her interest mm -hmm. and it developed over time. Right. This wasn't 
three things that she did in the spring of her senior year. This was things that she'd done 10th grade year that she built upon in 11th grade, right? Mm -hmm, that she mm -hmm. built that relationship with her, her advisor in senior year to really um, do competitions and other things in, her, in the fashion club. At the end of the day, you're only competing with yourself. And when you procrastinate or when you don't let go of these habits, right? As Kevin shared earlier, you're holding yourself back in this process and you're also leaving more to chance. Writing a personal statement in three days means that you can't get it thoroughly edited, right? You yeah, can't, exactly. You can't make sure there isn't that minor mistake, that misspelling that will ultimately be the difference between you and an equal candidate. At the end of the day, when they get down to it, a lot of students have similar profiles, but those qualitative aspects of, of your application, which are best demonstrative through your English written skills, right? Like through your extracurriculars, through your personal statement, that takes time and editing. It could be that deal breaker, right? That says like, okay, I don't know that I could invest in this person, right? The story they told me just isn't convincing enough. They say they know how to write. They say they were in the creative writing program and they did this and that, but like they misspelled three or four words in this personal statement and there's no punctuation there. Like, yeah, so. that is a serious red flag. All right, guys, we're going to wrap it up here. We'll be back with another interview. This one was more focused on general application strategy, formula, kind of big picture pillars that you guys should be focusing on. Honestly, uh, this is, video sounds like it was mainly designed for ninth and 10th graders, but don't worry, juniors. Uh, we will have another interview video just focused on essays and how to craft the best possible application. So stay tuned for that. Before I let you go, don't forget that Quad is offering free intro calls. I'm attaching the link in the description as well as the comment section below. Take advantage of these free resources, guys. Like, uh, there's no excuse anymore. There's so much content out there that you can truly get into an amazing top college using those materials. If, however, you would like extra help, we are here and available uh, for you guys to meet with and you guys can talk to Quad or uh, our company, Elevated. But thank you guys so much for watching and sticking until the end. We'll be right back with another interview. Don't go anywhere. Thank you.